Hi, I'm Doug Soltis with Storage Made Easy. Last week was the Boston OpenStack Summit. Boston was the 15th location for OpenStack, but it was also the 4th, having the summit back in 2011. As always, the talks were excellent, presented by members of the community, developers, and vendors. All talks can be found online at the OpenStack site. OpenStack Party was at Fenway Park, where the entire park was reserved for the OpenStack attendees. Of course, the marketplace did not disappoint this year with top vendors showing how they integrate into and as add ease of use to the OpenStack Okada release. Moving on, let's see what's new in the OpenStack Okada release with object storage. Both OpenStack Swift and Ceph had new releases with the Okada release. Swift, of course, is the official project of OpenStack when it comes to object storage. But Ceph is no stranger to OpenStack. While not an official project, it is certainly the darling of many storage deployments revolving around OpenStack. Looking first at what's new in OpenStack Swift. The 2.13 release of OpenStack Swift, as noted by John Dickinson, project technical lead, is the best OpenStack Swift release to date. John went on to note, that you can seamlessly upgrade from a previous version of OpenStack Swift, even one as far back as two years ago, in a single upgrade step to 2.13 as a rolling upgrade with no downtime. 2.13 focuses on performance improvements, and OpenStack Swift uses XFS as the underlying default file system for the drives. As drives continue to increase in size from the original release of OpenStack Swift with, say, 2 terabyte drives to today's 10 terabyte drives and growing, it's important to optimize the directory hash structure. And so performance improvements have been made by both eliminating unneeded directory hashes and optimizing the current file system trees. This eliminates IOPS from the drives, thus improving performance. Another focus of improvement for performance was in the erasure coding reconstructor. The reconstructor is responsible for checking and rebuilding erasure coded data and improvements to the handoff node data movement in case a primary node or drive has gone down and the ability for the erasure code reconstructor to shuffle work across all disk has brought further performance improvements. Also in the OpenStack Swift release, the last modify time has been added to container listings, which will save developers of having to do ahead on individual objects to get the last modified time, provided that they requested the listing via JSON or XML format. And last but not least, IO priority support for ARCH64, for all of you ARM enthusiasts out there, has been brought to OpenStack Swift in the 2.13 release. And what does the future hold for OpenStack Swift besides just improvements to balancing and performance? Well, John teased us with a lot of great futures. First up is tiering and policy migration. This is the idea that if I currently have a replicated policy and I want to tier or migrate my data, maybe into an erasure coded policy that'd be available. Next up are improvements to the multi-region deployments of OpenStack Swift. OpenStack Swift is eventually consistent and has always been very strong in multi-region deployments, but a new concept called Ring of Rings would give you finer tuning of the number of copies that you want to keep in each region or the ability to have things like replicated erasure coding. Of course, because of compliance and governance, encryption is top of their list, and future enhancements to Swift will bring up about new improvements to their encryption that was released a year ago at the Austin Summit. And last but not least is the ability to shard containers. Currently as storage grows and grows without bound, the number of objects that users want to put into a container seems to want to grow without bound as well. Container sharding will give Swift the ability to put a virtually limitless, limitless number of objects into any one container. Next up, Set day at OpenStack Boston. Sage Wheel gave a talk outlining that work had begun on Luminous, the next release, and an LTS release of Ceph. However, throughout the conference, 
Seth was celebrating the Kraken release. What's new in the Kraken release as related to object storage? Well, Blue Store is a new backend, and it has been released in Kraken. Now, Blue Store is experimental in Kraken, but it replaces XFS. More on that as we talk about Luminous. Furthermore, the S3 API has been expanded with multi-part copy object part support. Data compressions for objects has been added, as well as the ability to reshard existing buckets. As you recall, sharding of existing buckets to put in virtually limitless number of objects is a common theme between Ceph and OpenStack Swift. Ceph has also added an NFS v3 gateway to allow ease of migration from NFS to S3 or Swift API. And last but not least, they've expanded their Swift API with static website support. So what does the future hold for Ceph? Well, Luminous, as I noted, is the next long-term release. And with Luminous, brings Blue Store as the stable and default backend for all Ceph OSDs. This will completely replace XFS and will result in massive performance gains. Ceph API is expanded with S3 support for encryption. The server-side encryption for both SSEC, where a user brings their own key, and SSE KMS, where a key management store is used, will be added to the S3 API. Dynamic bucket sharding takes bucket sharding a step further by automating the process for users. NFS v4 integration is moved into the NFS gateway, allowing for legacy applications to continue to migrate data into the Ceph object store and allow new applications written against S3 and Swift API to consume that data. And last but not least, metadata search will be coming to Ceph Luminous. But let's look further at the performance gains associated with Blue Store. First up, let's compare Blue Store random writes against the current XFS file store. The current XFS file store in these two charts represents the blue line towards the bottom, and Blue Store, depending on the current master release or the work in progress, represents a two to four time improvement in both throughput and IOPS for random writes. Blue Store shows improvements in a mixed read write environment as well. Once again, the blue line is the current XFS file store and all current releases or candidates for Blue Store showing a high level of improvement both in throughput and IOPS. But what really matters to this talk is how it improves the RADOS gateway for object storage. Well, the blue and orange uh, lines on these histograms represents 512 KB and 4 meg chunks using the existing XFS backend. Substituting Blue Store for XFS shows a gain of again between two and five times performance depending on the number of buckets and servers uh, in your Ceph environment. Pivoting now to one final feature in Ceph Luminous, metadata search that I briefly commented on in a previous slide. Luminous will give the ability for metadata associated with both S3 and Swift objects to be added to an Elasticsearch cluster. This is a commonly requested feature of both end users and administrators, the ability to do a search and find objects based on that search. Now, if you can't wait for Ceph Luminous to gain metadata search, you should know that Storage Made Easy already has an unstructured data content search. Our metadata search extends beyond common metadata searches of just tags, name of document, modification date, etc. We're able to dive into the content of individual documents, be the PDF, Word, Excel, PowerPoint, enabling users to find and search for not just the name, but actual data inside their files. Of course, Storage Made Easy provides this for not only Ceph and Swift current and previous releases, but a number of object storage systems currently on the market. Is governance and compliance important to you? Does your current filer or object storage system support encryption or auditing of events? Storage Made Easy brings 
governance and compliance features to all object storage systems, with features such as secure file sharing, cloud governance policies, legal hold, file versioning and locking. We cover your data so that your end users can use object storage as if it was their local home drive. We make it easy, any device, anywhere, anytime, with our web file manager, our native apps for iOS and Android, or our desktop applications for Windows, Mac, and Linux. Are you ready to get more out of your OpenStack object storage? Contact Storage Made Easy today for a free trial of our enterprise file fabric. Or visit our website and sign up for a free personal account on our hosted SaaS solution. I'm Doug Soltes, and this has been your OpenStack Boston 2017 Object Storage Update. Thanks for watching.